Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to cover variable groups and player persistent variables. A player persistent variable is a variable that persists between sessions. For example, if I go into a world and a PPV gets set to five, I leave the next day I come back, it's still set to five. A variable group is a group of these PPVs that can be shared between your worlds. And before we get too far into it, I'm just gonna show you what I have set up here. I have a cube. The only thing the cube is doing is so I know where the trigger is. Open up the trigger. It is set to player. I have a sound recorder. And the only thing this thing is doing is holding my script. There's no sound recorded on it. And if I open my script, I just have when world is started. So in order to get when the player enters this trigger, and since the script is not attached to the trigger, I need to connect to the trigger. So I'm going to need an object variable. So we're going to go to our variables. We're going to create an object variable. We're just going to call it trigger. And on world start, we want to connect. So we're going to go to events. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to connections, and we're going to grab connect to event. We're going to drag that into when world is started, and we're going to remove the self. So that leaves us with connect object trigger enter to local event enter. We do need to grab and drag our trigger to the object slot. And since this is a trigger, we're going to keep trigger enter. But we're going to change enter to trigger enter. And the reason for this is because since we're only connecting to the one trigger, we can actually use when trigger is entered by player event. But what do we want to do when we enter the trigger? We want to set a PPV value. In order to do that, we need to go to values and we need to set persistent variable two. It's under values. We're going to grab and drag that under our trigger enter and we're going to set a PPV, which we have not created any yet. In order to create one, we go into our build menu, go to systems variable groups and we have to create a variable group before we can create a ppv so we're going to create one we're just going to give it a name i'll call it testing you can give it a description if you'd like and then you have the option to add it to the world that you're currently in i'm going to hit yes we're going to hit create and now it gives us the option to create a variable however if we go back to add it to world we see we have our testing group and if we go to own by me we have a testing group so we're going to click on that and create a variable. And we're just going to call this one PPV. Persistent variables can only be of the type number. And they will always default to zero for any player that enters the world. However, we can delete them. We can edit the name. And we can look at our values through this debug values menu. Now, this will only show your value. You cannot change another player's variable through this menu. And if we go back to the previous, we have these three dots here, and this will allow you to remove the group from this world, edit the group, or delete the group. And if you go to Own By Me, you get the same options. Now that we have a PPV created, we can actually select it now. So select from testing, we're gonna select our PPV, add, and we're going to set it to a one for the player. Now, if we open up our sound recorder, we can set our trigger and we're just gonna drag and drop our blue trigger pill in there. If we reset, clear and start, and we walk into our trigger and we go into build mode, we can go back to our systems tab, variable groups, testing, debug values, and our PPV is one. However, we're only setting it to one. So if I enter the trigger more than once, it's still always going to be one. If we want to increment, we need to get the value first. So I'm going to create a number variable and we're going to call it value and we're going to set. So we go to values, grab our set to under values, drag it into our trigger enter, grab our value, throw it in the variable slot. And then under values, we get get persistent variable. Drop that into value, player, and we can get our PPV. So now we're setting a number variable to what the 
player's current PPV is. So now we want to increment it. We're going to go to operators under basic operations. We're going to grab a little plus sign here, drop it in, grab our value, drop it into A. Go back to value, scroll down to value input, grab a number input. We're just going to set that to one. Now, if I restart the world, we go in, it should now be two. Go back to our systems tab, variable groups, testing, debug. Now our PPV is two. How we had it previously is still very useful. Just setting it to one, we can use it kind of like a Boolean. We're going to go to events. We're going to go to our player events when player enters world. And we're going to check. So we want to do an if. We're going to go to control, grab an if. We want to get the PPV and check if it is equal to zero. So we need to go to operators. Under logic, equal, equal for comparison. And we're going to just copy and paste this get player persistent variable. We do need to remove this player variable and drag in this player variable. We don't want to use this player variable. And we want to make sure it equals to zero. But we do need to create a new PPV. So we're going to go into our testing group. We're going to create a new one. We're just going to call it enter. Get out of that. And we're going to get our enter PPV value for the player. And we're going to see, does it equal zero? If it does, then we're going to set, we're going to set our enter to one for the player. And just to show what it's doing, we're going to grab a simple pop-up for the player. And I'm just going to type in first time enter. And if we clear and start, and I enter the world, I get this first time enter. And if I leave and I come back, I do not. So this is a, a good example of how we can use PPVs as a Boolean. So anytime you want to see when is the first time someone has done something, maybe you want to check to see if they're like a VIP member. This would be a way you can do that. However, the interesting thing about variable groups is I can access them in my other worlds. So in order to do that, let's go to one of my other worlds here. And I am going to grab two gizmos. I'm going to grab a script and a sound recorder. And I will attach our script to this sound recorder. And then we don't need when world is started, but it's not hurting anything, so it can stay there. We're going to use when player enters world, we will show a pop up for that player with the value of the PPV. So we need to cast it as a string since PPVs are numbers. So under values, type casting, variable as string, we're going to get the PPV for our player. However, we haven't added the group to our world yet. So we need to go into our build menu, go to systems, variable groups, don't have a group added, go to owned by me. And here is our testing. Hit the three dots, add to world, connect. Now our variable group testing appears and we can display our PPV. We're gonna hit add. And now when I enter the world, it's gonna show zero. And that's just because I haven't left and came back. So if I return to my home, and then return to the blank world that we were just in. When we enter, it should display a two. And there's our two. And that is pretty much all I have for variable groups and player persistent variables. One of the most interesting thing about the variable groups and something I've been wanting to do for a very long time is multi-world ecosystems for 
a single experience. Now, what I mean by that is each world could be a different level in one experience. And say you complete level one, you set your PPV to one. You complete two, you set it to two. But if I wanted to go to level four, but I haven't completed level three yet, I could move the player to a different part of that level and say, hey, you haven't completed the previous level, please go to this world to complete it. And then you can give them a door and all the instructions and whatnot. And with variable groups, it is now possible to prevent people from skipping ahead and playing a game or a multi-world experience out of order. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the video, or if you have suggestions for a future video, please uh, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you, you liked the video, if you learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are notified of all my future videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.